Good evening, everyone. My name is Carla, and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk mostly about craft stitch, but also other crafts that I am involved in, and a little bit of life thrown in. Happy Halloween, everybody. Um, tonight, it is Friday. It is October 29th. Um, so I'm here just a little bit early this weekend. I normally do my videos on Sunday morning, but because Sunday is Halloween, I'm going to be spending um, the day tomorrow and then spending the night and then spending all day with my brother and sister-in-law and niece and two nephews so that we can do all kinds of fun, spoopy Halloween things this weekend. And um, so because I was going to stay until uh, nighttime on Sunday and then drive home to go to bed so I can go to work on Monday, um, I decided to stay home tonight and do my video a little bit early and dress up for you guys because, you know, it's fun. I like dressing up. And so, um, I realized that you probably guys can't even see the top of my unicorn horn when I sit up normally. Um, but anyway, I had a lot of fun putting on makeup when I got home today and, um, I feel very glittery and unicorny. And I'm gonna have to put on my glasses to do the rest of my video, but that which makes me crazy because you know what kind of unicorn wears wears reading glasses. <laughs> but it's the same as when um, when I was a kid. I'm sure that you guys can all relate. When you were a kid and you had like the perfect costume and you were just like styling and feeling really great, and then your mom and dad made you put your jacket on before you went out trick or treating because it was cold outside. And that just always like ruined it. I hated that. <laughs> I hated it. Um, I would try sometimes to like do a costume that I could incorporate the coat. Um, I lived in Modesto growing up, which gets kind of cold in the winter, but not that bad. And it's not that cold yet in October usually. So I could just have a sweater or like a light jacket. I didn't have to have like a big parka or anything. So I would try and think of costumes that you know, I could wear something that fit the theme. I was very into the theatrics even, even at a young age. So um, I've always liked dressing up with makeup. I don't really like masks. Um, and so here's a little Halloween um, trivia for you guys about me. And I don't know if I've told this on my channel before or not. I can't remember. But if I have and you've heard it, Sorry, if you haven't heard it, then great. Um, so I do not, even to this day, like opening the door on Halloween. Even though I know it's just little kids out there. My heart starts racing. I get really stressed out about it because I had an incident that happened to me when I was about three years old, which I really don't remember, although I've heard about it and I know I have this fear. So, so basically, I was about three and it was like the week before Halloween. Um, and my parents and I were at my grandparents' house for, I don't know why, we were there. Um, we lived in Modesto and they lived in the Bay Area, which is like about a two hour drive um, back then. But living in a small town like that, we, you know, I live in Southern California now and driving two hours is no big deal. You'll do that to go to like a good restaurant. But, um, we didn't do that in Modesto. Driving to see the grandparents was a definite weekend trip. Um, so anyway, we're there and it was the weekend before Halloween. So it wasn't actually Halloween. Um, and my dad's uncle was going to a costume party and came over to show my grandparents his costume and um, didn't know that I was there and the grandparents and my parents didn't know he was coming. And, um, he was a very big man, um, well over six foot. He was just like a big giant man. I don't even know how he was dressed, but he was dressed as some kind of monster. He rang the doorbell and I answered it and I answered it to a huge six foot tall monster standing outside the door. And apparently I screamed, slammed the door and ran and hid under my grandparents' bed. And they had a really hard time getting me out. Um, of course, my great uncle felt awful. You know, he had no idea I was there. Um, so I've heard that story uh, my whole life. And 
honestly, I know that that happened because I just don't like opening the door on Halloween. Um, it really kind of freaks me out and I don't like people around me in masks when I don't know who they are. Um, I had a Halloween party when I was a senior in high school. My friend and I hosted it together, but it was at my house and somebody showed up who I knew was a friend of mine, but I didn't know who it was. It was a guy. Um, and he was wearing like kind of regular clothes and then like a, um, like a werewolf mask, like a full on mask. And he kept following me around the party and wouldn't say anything. And, um, so I kept like trying to get, and he wouldn't say anything. And I knew it was a friend of mine, but I didn't know who it was. And it just freaked me out. Um, and I made him take the mask off. And once I knew who it was, it was fine. But, um, and then I had another situation like that happen when I was in college. I was in the college bookstore on Halloween and somebody came in wearing a full on mask and cape and stuff and came not you know, they weren't coming to, uh, to me, but they were in my vicinity and I, I booked it out of there. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. So although I love Halloween, I love dressing up. Um, I'm definitely more of a spoopy Halloween person, which I just heard that word for the first time last year. And I love it. Um, uh, rather than the spooky stuff. Um, I don't mind like being scary with makeup, but always pretty scary, you know, not, not, disgusting scary um but anyway I do like Halloween and my nephew Hudson who's seven loves Halloween he is just I mean he wears costumes every day of the year so um he is like really excited and he is going to get to go trick-or-treating I think this year to a few selected houses um last year of course he couldn't go because of COVID so he's really looking forward to getting to go this year so Anyway, I don't know exactly what plans we have for the weekend, but I'm sure it's going to be lots of fun and I'm really looking forward to it. And because of that, I'm here tonight. So anyway, um, happy Halloween to all of you guys, uh, whether you celebrate or just pass out candy, whether you have kids in your life or not, I hope you have a very fun weekend. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm putting on the glasses. Do I still look like a unicorn if I'm wearing glasses? <laughs> I hope so. But you can't tell my like really really cute eye makeup. Um, okay. Um, oh, I before I do anything else, I want to give a big 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 thank you to uh, Deborah Dickin. Um, she used the buy me a coffee link this past week and sent me a little gifty, and um, which was really exciting because. Uh, that kind of has been ignored for a little bit of time, which is fine. But when somebody does use it and sends me a little gift, it's just so exciting. And so I just want to say a big thank you. And um, I really appreciate it. Okay, so let's get on to the stitching. I don't have any um, new starts or finishes this week. Um, and even though like it's a short week, right, because I don't have any Friday night or Saturday stitching to show you yet. I still actually did quite a few projects, so that's kind of exciting. So I did work this week on my uh, tribute for my mom. Several of you were like very kind in your comments telling me don't push yourself, work on this when you feel like it, there's no rush. Um, and I agree. Um, I, I do think I want to get it done before the end of January. Um, but if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Um, I'm using it just as as um, a time to think about my mom. And um, anyway, this is the chart. Um, I have changed the colors uh, in the rose. The rose is purple now, and the, the stem is a bit darker. I'm changing the words when I get to that, and I am stitching it all in silk. where I am with it. I think it's going to be really, really beautiful when it's done. I have been, when I pull it out, I just, I just do a few lengths of uh, one or two colors and just put in a few stitches. So I'm letting it just grow organically. Um, okay, 
Uh, I did work on fire burn this past week. Um, I'm going to take this with me um, tomorrow when I go over to Aaron Stacy's. Um, and we'll see. Maybe I can get it finished this weekend. I hope so. Um, I'm close. I'm very close, you guys. And I've got, oops, my needle. Okay. There we go. This, of course, is in ink circles. And I don't know, do you guys think I can get that done in a couple, like, a couple hours on Saturday? Maybe I'll work on this one tonight so I get kind of a head start on it. Maybe I, maybe I can get it finished. That would be really exciting. To get this done before the end of October would be great. Um, I've talked about how I'm going to um, kind of stitch this into, like, a pillow um, cover so that I can use it over an insert that can be heated in the microwave. And I found an insert. I had this thing, I was going through some old stuff and I found it, and it's actually, it's long, it was in a cover that's kind of long, but if I divide it, if I if I fold it in half, which I can then probably tack it so it's, it's square, it's square and it's exactly the right size. Um, it smells really good. It smells, it's got lavender in it. So it smells like lavender, it's got seeds and stuff in it, and you can either keep this in the freezer or you can cook it, not cook it, but you can heat it in the microwave to, to get it heated. So this I will be using as an insert for that pillow when um, when it's done. So I'm excited. I don't even have to get anything for it because I already have one. So that's great. Okay, next thing I worked on. Um, let me save that one. Coal. I worked on coal, which is a mail hook kit. One of four. And um, So I got more done in this, this corner part and some more of the stitches in the body here. It's come along. These four caps are going to be so cute when they're, they're done and hung together. calling moon fairy one and then I have another moon fairy two that I will be doing to hang with it so this is the one that I've been working on and this is it's not okay is it hold on <laughs> yes this is the second one this on a piece of card anchor that I dyed myself. The piece is big enough for both of the both of the patterns and I'm stitching it with um, black silk and then in the wings I'm adding a strand of it's kind of like a crystal blue blending filament. So I finished the fairy there was like several rows kind of in her in her thigh um, that needed to be done and I did a couple rows up here and I filled in the bottom down here so um, it doesn't look like I have a lot to do on this but the reality is is that this is a lot of stitches a lot a lot a lot of stitches and they're tiny because they're on 22 count Hardinger so um, it's a good kind of mindless project because obviously um, you don't have to think about what you're stitching, but you still have to really look at it because, as I said, the stitches are pretty tiny. So, um, I haven't worked on that in a while, and so that was kind of fun to pull out. And I was thinking about maybe bringing this one for the weekend, but I think I'm going to bring Firebird because I really want to get that one done. And this one I don't feel as immediate a need. 
I feel like my eyelashes are flopping around, so if all of a sudden they come off or they're wonky, you'll know why. Um, oh, Bellatrix. I have a feeling this is going to be a short video tonight, you guys. Bella Filipina Bellatrix. I need a minder out of the way. And she's looking good. So I worked right in here. Um, actually, I started her leg. And then I pulled this, uh, this black karnik down. So that goes all the way to the bottom of the window and then over. Um, it was funny. I'd asked you guys about the, um, the stitches, this right here, and like what you thought it was and was it necessary. And it's so funny because I got so many different um, answers. And... When I first looked at this pattern, to me, it looked like um, sort of like a reflection from the window or something. Because to me, this is it's a, like a turret window, um, like that she's looking out over her kingdom or whatever. Um, some people said that they thought this was like a mirror and it was a reflection of a mirror. Some people saw mountains and some people saw trees. And now I kind of see mountains and trees. So um, I did start stitching it. Um, all of those stitches are actually half stitches, so, um, it'll go really quick, but I just thought it was so funny that, like, that little element, like, so many people see a different thing, which is, you know, which is fine, but, um, I thought that was kind of, kind of interesting. Oops. I'm putting it away without, without the, the stitching. Pulled out something I haven't worked on in, in a bit, which is Night Walk Down by the Blue Flower. This is my Black Cat Birthday Sal that I started last year, 2020, August 2020. So it is over a year old, and I don't think it's not even half done. I don't think. Um, I am stitching this on, I believe it's a 36 count linen. Um, which I hand dyed myself. Um, I really love the way it looks. Um, it's just a little bit more difficult to stitch on linen for me. And I basically worked on, I started the, um, the words. Um, because linen is a little bit harder for me to see basically, and because it's a kind of, it's a pretty small one, I wanted to, um, to do the words because they were easy to count off the top of her head. That wasn't a very far away to count. And then I could hit the peacock over here. Um, I did make a decision that, because the peacock color is supposed to be this kind of white creamy color that's in the moon, which I think is a little bit hard to see. So I'm actually going to do the peacock in a peacock color, this one down here. And, um, I know it's not quite as ethereal as a white peacock, but I think it will be really pretty. And the fact that I will be able to see it will be an advantage. So anyway, that's where I am on Night Walk Down. And I'm really, I'm enjoying it. I think it's going to be so beautiful when it's done. Um, I'm doing it with one strand, which is not my norm. Normally I work with two strands, but um, I am doing it with one strand on this. And as I said, I dyed this fabric myself. Um, it isn't showing quite as delicate as it is in real life. The, the tone is not quite right on the camera, but um, I think it is very, very, very pretty. 
I just did a few like color changes. Um, this is cinders and I think that's what was called for. But then I changed the cat. Um, so cinders is kind of like a black that has like a burgundy running through it. Um, I changed the cat to a black that had a blue running through it. Um, I thought that would be cool to have the two different colors. Okay. And then last but not least, I worked on Wind Moon Fairy, which is my uh, Dimensions Gold Kit. The artwork is by Nene Thomas. Okay. So the only thing I did on this, uh, I had talked last week about that I had started doing the back stitching on the wing and did not like it. In fact, I did it like three times. Like I did it kind of longer stitches and that didn't look good and I took them out. And then I did like very small back stitches and that didn't look good. So I took it out and then I did kind of mixed and that didn't look good. Um, so, but I showed you guys it. And what was funny is that that was Sunday that I showed you. And then that afternoon I was watching Floss Tube and I watched Garrett, the coffee stitcher, and he was talking about backstitch. Somebody had asked him a question and he was talking about on a long kind of curvy backstitch that he sometimes couches it. And I thought, well, that's a good idea. I never even thought of doing that. And then later in the week, another uh, one of my subscribers said something about couching too in regards to this because I was saying how I didn't like it. So I took the back stitches out and then last night I went ahead and I did some couching and I think it looks way better. Um, it's just, it's the smoother look. So these are supposed to, this, uh, these back stitches are supposed to be done with two strands. So I use the, the main thread, two strands, but then I used to use one strand for the the couching thread, I guess that's what you would call it. Um, I think it looks way better and I am happy with it. It's still not perfect. Um, but I say that when I only have a little bit done, I think when the whole piece is done and there's, you know, back stitches all over it, it's going to look better. Um, right now they kind of just like stand out because it's the only thing on here. But um, I thought that that was like kind of a really good solution. And I was really happy that I saw it both from Garrett and from my friend. So, um, so thank you for, for that great idea. Um, so let me guys, let me know what you guys think about couching. Is that something that you ever do? Um, I was thinking like maybe if when I get further in this piece that maybe somebody might be interested in, in kind of just a, like a demo of the couching and how it's done and what it looks like, you know, while you're doing it. Um, so let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. I haven't done a demo video in quite a while, but they seem to be my, um, like my demo videos are the ones that are definitely most popular. People go and look at those almost every day. So, um, so definitely if I have stuff to impart that people might want to see, I would love to do it. I just don't know what it is, what kind of things people want to see. If there is anything else that you'd like me to do as a demo, then also please let me know and um, I'll do what I can. So that's basically all I have for you guys today. I know it's like a super, super quick video, I guess. I guess I'll probably schmooze for a little while right now and it won't be quite as short. Um, I don't have any uh, haul or anything like that. Um, kind of been being a little bit more frugal lately as far as spending for my crafts and I have stuff so much stuff so it's not like I really need anything right now when I am looking for stuff I'm looking more for like finishing things and um but I have to be careful with that because I get ideas in my head that like when I was working on night walk down I got a really like cool idea for how I could finish it excuse me and I had to kind of pull myself back because it's like hey I'm not anywhere near finishing that piece so um there's no reason to get uh, finishing items now. Um, obviously, I should wait on that until um, I'm a little bit closer because really, I don't have room to store stuff, so why would I get a bunch of stuff now? That doesn't make any sense. Um, 
but anyway so I don't really have any haul to show you guys um plans I already told you plans for the weekend starting tomorrow I'm gonna go over to Aaron Stacy's I'm gonna bring um the uh Ewok that she stitched that I'm supposed to frame for her when I haven't done it yet. I'm going to bring it over with me tomorrow and the frame and all the, the stuff to do it. And um, I'll do it this weekend for her um, while I'm there. And um, I think tonight I have been putting off watching Hocus Pocus um, because I always, I kept feeling like, oh, it's too early. Don't watch it yet. It's too early. Well, Tonight, it's not too early, so I think I'm going to watch Hocus Pocus tonight and do some stitching. I haven't eaten dinner yet, so I have to figure out something to eat. Um, once I get off this video, I have to go see Unicorn, which is kind of sad because I really kind of am enjoying being a unicorn right now. Um, <laughs> so I have to, you know, take all this makeup off, um, find something to eat, watch Hocus Pocus, and then tomorrow I'll be heading over to Aaron Stacy's. So anyway i hope that you guys do have a really wonderful weekend um and that um that you have lots of fun doing whatever whatever your plans are i hope that they're lots of fun um i i think that that's about it um i guess next week i'll have a little bit of extra stuff to show you because i'll have two days extra worth of stitching um so that should be fun um, and we'll be in November. So I'm going to have kind of a new, um, theme, which is, I've talked about it. It's kind of be going to be like race to a finish. Um, so I'll show you all the pieces that I'm going to be really trying really hard to get finished in November. Um, so that when I start, uh, December, or I mean, when I start next year in January, I feel like, um, it will be okay to <laughs> do a few more starts because, I got my whip uh, list down. Um, I don't think I could get it down. I don't. I don't remember. I'll have to look and see what it was when I started in twenty uh, twenty one. How many whips I had had, and if I have lower that number, if I'm higher than that number, um, not that it really matters. Um, I'm I'm content with the number of pieces that I have and what I've gotten done and. This has been a stressful year for me, so the fact that I've gotten stuff done is actually, you know, pat myself on the back there. But, um, anyway, uh, now I'm just rambling. <laughs> I'm just rambling away. So, um, anyway, I hope you guys have a great weekend, a great Halloween. Um, I can't tell her my eyelashes all wonky right now. I think they may be hanging silly. I don't know. The problems of the unicorn. Anyway. Um, and I can't see, right? Cause I took my glasses off. So all I see are like these black blurs and, um, I don't know, it could be hanging off by a thread and I, I really couldn't tell at this point. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great week. Um, until I see you again, please remember to be content, be kind and be crafty. Bye.